Hi, this is Flagship Medicine, and today we're gonna talk about part 2 of the topic glucocorticoid induced leukocytosis and differential diagnosis of leukocytosis. The third mechanism is decreased apoptosis of neutrophils. Apoptosis comes from the ancient Greek words apo, away from, and ptosis, falling, also known as programmed cell death. In the body, there is a balance between cell proliferation and apoptosis that maintains homeostasis. There are two pathways of apoptosis, the intrinsic one, which ultimately affects mitochondrial membrane integrity, and the extrinsic one, which is initiated by binding dead ligands to their receptors. What is the effect of glucocorticoids over the intrinsic pathway? The major checkpoint is upregulation of BCL2 family, which contains anti-apoptotic factors through other kinases that also inhibit apoptotic enzymes. Glucocorticoids also activate inhibitor of apoptosis proteins and mitogen-activated protein kinases that inhibit apoptotic factors. Regarding the extrinsic pathway, glucocorticoids inhibit caspase 8 and the mRNA of fast proteins which are pro-apoptotic receptors, thus decreasing apoptosis of neutrophils. The last mechanism of glucocorticoid-induced leukocytosis is the release of bands. There are multiple stages of maturation of neutrophils, also known as granulopoiesis, starting in the bone marrow through the bloodstream. In the peripheral blood, we have bands and segmented neutrophils. Interestingly, banded neutrophils have superior antibacterial capacity, although they have immature morphology. When a systemic inflammation exists in the body, the emergency granulopoiesis is activated and we notice a significant left shift on the blood smear. On the other hand, in glucocorticoid therapy, we observe only some degree of left shift. Let's make a short recap. The mechanisms of glucocorticoid-induced leukocytosis are mainly neutrophil-related. They lose the adhesion from the endothelium and they persist more time in the blood. Oh no, everything is so confusing! I have an idea, let's talk about the practical aspects. To have a good differential diagnosis, we have to look firstly at historical and physical examination findings. If it's glucocorticoid related, the patient will not appear to be ill. Also, we have to keep in mind the magnitude of leukocytosis. The higher the concentration, the greater likelihood of biologic changes. We also have to notice the magnitude of left shift that we discussed earlier. Another clue is the persistence of leukocytosis. If it's glucocorticoid related, typically it starts in 5 to 24 hours and has a constant value over time. Also, it does not correlate with acute phase reactants. Thank you very much for watching and remember, always look at the whole picture beyond the obvious. If you enjoy this content, like and subscribe.